All right. Sunday evening. It's March 20th, 2022. And uh, we're starting to rock and roll with our Sunday evening show, uh, talking more and more about real estate. But before I start here, I would like to uh, thank John Lynn for his presentation last week, um, which was an awesome presentation for those of you who were not here. Um, we, I did record it, and I'm going to show you where you can find it um, at this particular <laughs> frame so that uh, you can go back into the recording and uh, deal with it. Um, so if you let me share my screen here. Search. Oh, right. We put a new search in. It is RTP dash. No, we have it on YouTube. So let's go to YouTube. So when you pull up your YouTube, and you see all types of wonderful stuff. For us, it's RTP, BIZ, development. <laughs> See what comes up. RTP development. Okay. So if you click on here, we go to our videos. That's out of the way here. I think this was the one here. We are saving this account pay two okay. percent. Today, five years later, it would be two hundred and forty-nine thousand. John, this is My your presentation. Home, and I just found out four ten dollars. From a few weeks ago. It's now 435 because another one just sold. And okay. so you can go back into the videos and watch the presentation. And it's all on YouTube. I'll make sure um, have changed the name next week so that we can have um, John Lynn's name underneath the um, in the, underneath the message pad here. And this will, this is where all the other recordings will be stored. Um, so every Sunday when we do something, um, every Thursday when we do one of the Forexes, or every Friday when we do the accounting stuff, all the videos are going to be here. And with that said, we were able to um, we were able to have our new website go up this week. I'll show you what that looks like so that it can be interactive. Um, this is the RTP Biz Development website, which will highlight everything that we want to do. 
and how we want to do it. So in essence, um, you know, it will, we pretty much want to make our website a monetizable website for everything that we do. And the, um, the beginning of uh, how we partner with everybody so that you can access um, everything right off of the website, including the CRMs. We haven't, we haven't gotten that far yet. Right now, it's just the placement for all the information that we need our customers to see. But for us to have the actual data and, and the blueprint in order to do deals in the background, that's coming. So for example, just to give you an example of what that means, that means that let's say if Kavan is doing a deal and needed the paperwork or something along those lines, um, based on our products or our services, he should be able to log in and get that information um, and have it automated, uh, sent through from the website itself. So whatever documents he's looking for to close a deal, we should have it in an automated um, email so that the customers can just click, 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 and then they'll get access to uh, whatever information that they need. Um, what we do though, is we account for the money, we build, develop, and buy companies, we teach others how, we show you how to build your portfolio, gather our clients, we guide our clients to their objectives, we invest alongside our clients, and we change lives. How we do it? We simply do it by doing more deals, we find more deals, we find all the capital, we have an exit strategy, we partner with partners, we make the management team, uh, then it goes into a lot of the verbiage in the website that will then um, lend itself to uh, more information on, on what we do. Yeah. And there's a box in here that they can request a quote for whatever uh, they want to do. So this is the website, guys. Go go and play with it and uh, let me know what your thoughts are. Uh, we have given a, we do have a free book to give away. Uh, let me see if I have that link. I'll give that link um, in the chat room right here. Let me see where that link is. This is the link here. Let me find out if that is the case. Yes. So here's a link to a free book that you can download. 
And this was a nice funnel that was created. And I will put it in the chat. There you go. And if you click on it, you'll have more automations in the website so that you'll make it almost um, brain proof. So the level of mistakes, we won't, we won't, we won't incur those. So let me get your own copy PDF ebook. So once you click on getting a free copy, it'll take you to a place where you can put your name in. Click on it. And this is the book here. You'll get a PDF copy of that once you fill this information out and hit the download and this should look like you see I downloaded a copy Rather slow. What is? Oh, this is what the book looks like. And it's an easy read. Um, some of the same concepts that we go through right here in terms of understanding infinite banking, velocity banking, um, trying to get out of debt. Um, all of these are concepts that uh, you're playing with in the book to help understand you know, why are we going after capital in the first place? to cover, reduce the size here. Okay. Oh, this is the table of content. So let's simply start out with chapter one, extracting the right role models for yourself. And we talked about some famous individuals there, such as uh, Dave Ramsey, Grant Cardone, Howard Clark, and Robert T. Kiyosaki, to name a few, but everyone has a, a, a angle um, as far as um, developing the thought process of how to get out of debt free. And each one of those have a different angle. So I just wanted to mention uh, uh, who, the, who the gurus in the space that we play in are, and if we can copy some of their strategies then it would be a phenomenal thing for us to move through the space with. And all of them talk about what's good debt and bad debt. And we have to figure out exactly how to utilize debt in order to make our dream a reality. So we, in this one, I talked about the um, establishing an end game with your vision. Uh, chapter three, we talked about getting debt free, which is more mental than physical. 
So we, we go through some of the steps involved for that. Um, in chapter four, we talk about becoming a bank unto yourself. And there again, you'd find that that chapter is, 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 is really interesting because a lot of concepts between infinite banking and velocity banking are not really taught to us. We, uh, velocity banking, for those of you who are unaware, is simply leveraging um, the personal unsecured credit lines to move the ball forward in a manner that will reduce your debt capacity. Infinite banking is very similar to whereby you can use your whole life policy to do the very same thing. It just has a different name to it. But those are both methods in which um, um, we are finding capital so that we can be um, self-sufficient and self-serving. In this group, we would like to see multiple investors throughout the space. And those are some of the, some of the thoughts that are going to going to help you get to what does it mean to have investable money that you can invest. And at the end of the day, whether it's infinite banking or velocity banking, you want to have access to capital, whether it's the cost of capital is at 7%, 8%, 9%, but you want to turn that money over so that you can have a return on that money of anywhere north of 15, 20%, or even 25%. And you, you keep the spread on that money. And so that's the basic uh, idea moving forward. So whether you're putting it in, in a building, um, in a business, or in a passive space, um, that's still going to be the general scenario between um, why you do what you do and understanding that is going to be super critical even beyond uh, the numbers of your analysis and then the question then becomes for chapter five after paying off that uh, what is the next step so we talked about some of those things um, starting a business registering with the state um, major banks versus credit unions building your business credit separately from your personal social security number. And there again, for those of you who are not a part of the United States, that's a, it, it doesn't mean you can't, it simply means you just need to partner up with an individual in the space that have the capacity in order to do deals. So it doesn't mean that that's eliminated to you, you just simply find a partner um, and that door will be open to you. Uh, this week, I found a very unique bank, um, and I'll, I should talk about that maybe next week, but uh, this bank, I think it's located in south of us, it's either Stewart, Florida or Vera Beach, Florida, that gives um, individuals or non-residents loans for acquisitions of real estate. Hmm, let me let that sink in for a minute. Um, so if you are a citizen, great. If you are a resident, great, a permanent resident. But what happens if you're a non-permanent resident and you do have status um, to be here? Specifically, if you're underneath the um, immigration status of an H-1B um, where uh, you're visiting, or you have the rights to work here with an A number or um, something along those lines, but you, you haven't gotten out of that lane in order to become, um, how should I put it, bankable uh, to whereby institutions would lend you money. Of course, if you're a citizen or a permanent resident, yes, um, you're gonna find more banks say yes to that category, but we are finding some banks in this space um, even if you're just simply a non-resident of the state, they will still bank with you in terms of allowing you to own real estate. So that was interesting this week when we came about. Chapter six, we wanted to talk about your partners in business, not only including your employees, but having a partnership with the IRS. 
IRS is going to be one of the critical um, relationships within business um, afforded to you. And you've got to understand exactly what that relationship is like. Through the accounting spaces, uh, we, we talk a lot uh, about the IRS and, and how you can leverage your relationship with the IRS. Now, I didn't go too deep into um, what the IRS relationship should be. Um, I thought that that would be something that we developed together, but um, you got to view them as a partner. Don't view them negatively because at the end of the day, um, nobody wants to be in the line of tax avoidance. You don't mind minimizing your taxes. That's legal. But once you get into some of the practices for avoidance, that can be um, criminal. So you want to be mindful of the rules and regulations of the IRS as far as it's concerned. Um, for chapter seven, you have to be constantly learning in the space and challenging yourself to do everything possible. Um, and you, for, for, for me and everyone else surrounding me, we spend about four to five hours a week just constantly learning about new inroads, new relationships, new banks, new private equity companies, new, uh, new theories that are out there that we can leverage within our own capacity. And how do you leverage that? You simply join other networking groups constantly and constantly pushing the needle for partnerships and the likes thereof. And then once you constantly challenge yourself in the space, you'll realize that over time, this leads into us. Chapter eight, how do you think about um, wealth and how is that translated into your personal wealth? Um, so we conclude with tying it all together and, uh, you know, just having an understanding of, of all of these concepts puts you in a different lead. So the idea of wealth, I mean, the, the, there is a lot of wealth here in the United States. The difficulty we have um, with the wealth in the United States is a, is a wealth gap. And that wealth gap is simply between the groups that have versus the groups that have not. And the groups that have, they're doing everything in their power in order to accelerate that growth. So the question is, how do you compete against that or even join that so that you can figure out your own method so that you could be in that group of the haves? And that's just it. Um, a lot of them aren't doing anything illegal. It's a lot of hard work, but for the most part, we're all here to come together and understand how do we get to that um, considerably beautiful place that we have enough capital to constantly do our deals and uh, repeat the cycle over and over and over again. Um, millionaires, I heard this week, aren't uh, the smartest people in the room. They're just the smartest copycats. So there again, the link you'll find in the chat, and it's an easy read. It's nothing to, um, it doesn't go into too much detail. So you'll have an easy read um, along your journey with reading this. Um, but I at least wanted to give an idea of, you know, where do you start from? Because that's a constant question I get. Where do you start from? And I would say start by getting your mind right. You know, start by understanding some of the concepts out there. Um, because if you don't understand the concept itself, then it's going to be extremely difficult for you to move on in the space of being an investor and understand what we're talking about even on this show. So when you join us and we mention a concept, this would certainly make it a lot easier for you to navigate the space 
and ask questions according to your personal outreach. Right. So this is beautiful. Let me put that down. Let me get out of here. So you all can just, the book is no cost to you, um, but you'll have to leave your information here as a part of it. And once you hit the place order and download, um, there should be a link sent to your email to download that very same book, and then you'll be able to have it. We'll eventually put that on the website as well. Um, the services that we offer, of course, a lot of them stem from um, the virtual CFO, the marketing, the business development, um, individuals who would like to sell even a version of this website. We have partnered with the group in India um, to white label uh, the development and the marketing of the website. So individuals who are interested in website development, they do it all right from here. So you can schedule a free consultation for any one of these uh, services that's needed. Um, we haven't gotten to the point yet of adding the referral component. So for example, if you have a client and they want a website done, yes, we can schedule a free consultation and it'll take you to our calendar page, depending on which one of the services that you're looking for, you simply clap, clap, select it, and it'll take you to a calendar whereby you can be booked on our calendar and it'll give you a set of times of the availability for each and every one of these. And whoever referred you, we have a referral program. So if we do accept a client and that client came to us from any one of you, there's a, I think it's either 5% or 10% referral fee that goes back to any one of the individuals that refer to client um, within this space. And that's just, that's just the marketing aspect. We do the very same thing for all of the services. Um, and there again, we haven't placed um, a couple of the services that we provide in the space. Um, for example, one of the products um, that we talked about earlier is the book. Um, so we'll have a book selection here. Um, let me see what's happening there. And then we'll have a course that we're developing. So these are the books. Um, you can get them for free through us, but um, we have courses that we're building through the website as well. Uh, we've had, we haven't started our development in this space, so we're just gonna put coming soon um, if you select the courses. And we are selling business contract templates. So the business contract templates that we have here are for um, the starters, and we're adding a new business template, one every month. So as I've gone through the space, I realized that individuals don't have a business plan. So we provided one here for 99 cents. Um, an independent contractor agreement, we've provided one here for 99 cents. Uh, a mutually uh, non-disclosed agreement. We provided one here for 99 cents. An operational plan. We provided one here for 99 cents. And every month, we'll add a new contract. Um, one of the other contracts that we probably will add for next month will be an employee verification level. So those of you who are in the space that are entrepreneurs and need legal um, letters, uh, I, I use these legal letters all the time. So I said, you know what, why not? Um, the, the older I get, the more um, legal letters I need. So I'm just gonna tailor the ones that I use and offer them right here for sale. So this can be a true um, resource to you if you're in business. Um, we do have a space here where um, I would like to lend out my money within the partnership programs. 
has go to it. Um, a part of being a lender in the space, um, the SBA 7A is a wonderful program. And you would have heard me talk about it on this program quite a bit. So I've added some information here about the SBA 7A so that um, um, you can think about that as it relates to your real estate uh, development as an, as an extension of your portfolio in terms of where to find the money, how to capitalize on the money. And over the next duration of two to three weeks, um, we should have access to Google Nation who will, who will therefore give us access to their capital for acquisitions within a box. So we'll add um, 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 those private equity groups in um, with us so that we ourselves can start doing acquisitions. Um, don't be afraid of asking any questions in the acquisition space um, because we want to be the leader in that um, and in that space for not only lending out money, but um, as a way for individuals to see what we do, uh, learn what we do, understand how we're acqu acquiring real estate. And you copy the same thing. And you now have a place to say, you know what, um, Devon or John or, or whomever the mentors in the space is going to be, you now can say, you know what, I want to do a deal in my neighborhood. But what's stopping you? I don't have any money. Well, don't let that stop you. Um, you know, I will write a check for deals for acquisitions. I'm doing deals all the time. So with that said, leverage what you do have. I see Whitney Johnson, you raise your hand. Go ahead, <laughs> unmute your mic, ask a question. I just hear Hey, hey what do you say with me? <laughs> Everything good. I just didn't let you know I'm on, I, I am I am live with you. All right, not a problem. Rock rock with us as we rock it, you know. Oh, uh, how is everything? And everything is excellent, man. You know, the... I, missed, I missed the last one of the, I was working times I get off. It was almost nine o'clock. So I try to catch this one to see what the update is. All right. Well, let me show you. Um, if you go to the chat, right? Uh -huh. Let me see. I put a link in the chat box for the website. No, not the website, the YouTube channel. Okay. Let me go back. This is the YouTube channel. All right. Underneath RTP Biz, B I Z Development. All right. In YouTube. And you can go back and replay all the shows that you've missed. Okay. All right. So you haven't missed much. All right. All right. Now, the, the one show that you should go back to is this one here called Creating Financial Success. That's the one where John did a presentation last week on um, understanding your numbers in the real estate space. Okay. Yeah, that's the one I really did one here. Yeah. But I'll, I'll listen to that. You got it right here. Right. <laughs> yeah. So, so, and that's why we wanted to create a space for content so that if anybody missed anything, they could come right here and pick it up. Right. So don't feel bad. You didn't miss a thing. You just got to go back and review it. Okay. Okay. All right. And, and there again, too, Whitney, if you see a deal within your space, you know, uh, raise your hand and bring it to the table. Let's analyze it. And let's see if it's a good deal for the group. Um, and let's put some money behind it to do the acquisition. Okay, then. All right. All right. I was checking on some stuff. I see some stuff came along, but um, I have to go back at it. Um, this guy's working. Um, so I'll check on it. Mm -hmm. And I'll check the, I'll call the lady and check to see how, how the prices go on it. They see they, um, they always send me, um, New um, new deals from Melbourne between Melbourne and Palm Bay. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, so I'll, I'll check on them and see how best. What kind of prices they offer on them? Yeah, well, the website isn't fully finished yet. Um, if you find a deal, we're creating a space within the website that you can put all the information in for that deal and start initiating contracts to, to get that property on the contracts right through the website. Okay. So everybody here within this group will probably create a special login and through the login portal, um, you should be able to um, um, leverage what we have here in the group, send out the letter of intent, send out the proof of funds to get the deal on the contract. Okay. Once we get the deal on the contract, then let's look forward to doing the acquisition space. And, right. and down in your area, um, even though I know you're in the Palm Bay area, but building is going on like crazy in the space. Yeah, right. um, they're cutting down a lot of they're cutting down a lot of properties and building a lot of homes right now. Right. But let's face it, some of those properties are only ten to fifteen thousand dollars, right? And the comps in some of those areas are ranging anywhere from two hundred k to two hundred and forty thousand. So, right, so the general idea now, after you go through um, the other video, think about it like this: Let's spend 10, 15, even 20K on the land. Uh, let's put in another 140 to 160 in development costs. Now, guess what? That the total cost on everything else that you're looking at is probably about 180. 180, and uh, uh, the, if the comps in your area, in some of those areas that I notice are minimum of about 230, 240, that's anywhere from 50 to 60K profit. Right, right, right. You know, that's a decent metric. Okay. Right. So, and, and there again, you know, we can do things like that. Right now, um, the bidding wars on some of these properties are outrageous right now. I don't, I don't know how many of you tapped into your realtor to see what's going on, but a lot of the realtors that I speak to in the space, what they're saying is, um, they're saying is Devon, don't try to acquire anything at this particular time because prices are just way too high. Right? But there again, as I told myself, there's always an opportunity. You just got to figure out how to find it. So if we constantly look for absentee owners in the space that live out that's having problems, well, that's a distressed property. Distressed property is always going to be selling whether prices are high or low. We just need to find the diamonds in the rough in order to make those acquisitions. So right. uh, don't, don't allow the escalation of price um, scare you into doing an acquisition. You know, So we, we want the website now to be leveraged in that way to whereby you know, if you see a building to purchase later on, you should be able to hit this button. We don't have it activated right now, but as you hit this button, fill out the information, and right. then we'll do an analysis on, uh, on the building purchase and see if it matches the one in the box that we want to do. So we can do building purchase, we can do improvements, um, we can do equipment loans, we can do new construction, we can do land acquisitions, we can do business purchases. We can do most other um, expenses that are tied to companies. And when we say most other expenses, um, how we purchase uh, businesses, I think Warren Thomas talked about it in his meeting with us that said, we have a couple of AR lenders in the space that will help us acquire businesses up to $25 million. Yeah. Um, Grant Cardone mentioned it the other day. I mean, these these guys are are talking about it, um, and they're and they're and they're giving us the answers to what we need. And a lot of them are saying, "Don't start a business, buy a business, okay? and then constantly scale by buying other businesses in the space." Uh, Kavon, I see your hand up. Go go ahead. Oh yes. Um, good night, everyone. Um, I have a question in terms of due diligence. Go ahead. So 
we are, for example, we are in the Caribbean mm -hmm. and using your software, we locate a property. Yeah. Um, who is going to be on the ground itself? What team do we have in place on the ground to do due diligence? Or is that not necessary based on how we digitally investigate? Right. And, and that's a good question, Kavon. Our initial farm area is going to be in our backyard right here in the Bavard community. So for me to do due diligence on a place, it'll take me maybe two, three minutes in order to verify the title, in order to verify uh, who owns it, as well as how much uh, debt is on the place, or even if it's free and clear. That, that, that should take me about two minutes to do, right, with the software. However, if I need to go further, take a look at the property, um, everything in this community is within driving range of about 30 to 40 minutes um, in our farm area. So that shouldn't be an issue just to drive by and take a look, right? Once those two things occur uh, and we analyze the numbers, um, then the next step is to try and contact the owner um, and put an offer on the place. So the due diligence shouldn't take a very long time. Um, we do have uh, other people with boots on the ground here that's willing to be bird dogs for us. Um, so, so that shouldn't hurt us in terms of the due diligence. We do have attorneys that we can go to um, for help on the acquisitions if we need to. Um, John mentioned that he already have a setup for negotiating deals. There again, you know, um, if we see a deal that we like, we can include his attorney on the, on the ticket you know, for a fee, and then we go from there. So everybody gets paid through the entire process, including the one who referred the deal. So if you refer a deal, um, and that deal we get on the contract, guess what, you get paid for that. You know, we don't want the club to be a club that whereby nobody benefits. Everybody has to benefit in order for this thing to work. So, and, you know, a lot of times we're not, you know, you're not, you're not looking at, at selfish people here in the space. What you're looking at is um, individuals who would like to do, I mean, we get to the point whereby we can do 50, 100, 200, 300 deals a year. You know, that's, that's a lot of change that can be spread out through the group. So the goal is, um, let's see how we can take um, what we have right here and leverage it to, so that you can win as well. But it means that we all will win, right? So Kavon, whether you bring a deal, um, Catherine, whether you bring a deal, Dwight, whether you bring a deal, you guys are in the Caribbean, but guess what? That doesn't stop you from bringing a deal, leveraging what we have here. You know, we'll go further into how we find deals later on on the other show. But what I wanted to highlight during this session was the new website um, with understanding how um, it's coming along in terms of its development and what it means for you to have a one-stop location that says, you know what, the, um, I found the deal. How do I get it to the finish line in order to close it? And that's exactly um, um, through this website, we can do that. You know? and, and there again, um, they can schedule a consultation. You could schedule a consultation with me or whatever, if it, or just bring the deal to our Sunday evening sessions and we can go from there. Um, so we added a blog as well. I think in the specialty, um, the capital partnership program. Um, we, we don't have one of the programs on here, but the capital partnership program is where we, we talk about um, the partnerships that we can do. A lot of times these partnerships um, would simply mean individuals who would like to leverage us as their partners where we bring the capital and they bring some other specialty to the group, um, we can talk about that. Or even accessing our capital partners for whether it be 
tied in capital um, for their private placement stuff, or whether it be SRS financials for their um, private equity access, um, or whether we do a contract with Versailles out of New York. So we have, we have groups out there um, that would like to partner with, with everybody so that um, they can benefit. Let me tell you though, those groups are predatory. They're not, um, they're not out there for um, kicks and giggles. Um, they're out there to make money, point blank. And when they do their, their, their initial communications, yeah, it's a meet and greet, but at the end of the day, they're spilling out what their criteria is in terms of the level of partnerships that they're willing to do and what that partnership looks like. Sometimes that's an exchange of money for origination fee. Sometimes that's an exchange of um, um, fees for, everybody terms it a little differently, but um, one of the best terminology that I've seen in the space is uh, we offer, uh, like, how how the lawyers do it, the lawyers, um, they charge a, a, they call it now, they charge a retainer, right? And some of the savvy investment bankers are leveraging that terminology for um, how they collect their fees, right? Uh, they charge a retainer and they match it against every hour that has worked on the deal itself. However, once that um, retainer goes to zero, they don't ask for any more money. They then continually work on the deal in order to get it done. And once it's done, um, that's how the exchange of revenues are passed, whether it be debt or whether it be equity. They can't give any guarantees, but you can only um, rely on them as far as their past experience goes. Um, because then it can get kind of sort of convoluted with um, the SEC if they use language such as guarantee. Anyone giving you a guarantee in the fundraising or capital space, that's illegal. So you, you don't want to be with, um, with any of the investment houses that are giving you a guarantee. But like everything else, um, we just want to talk about that uh, most of these partners in the capital space, they're predatory. Their, their website might say one thing, but boy, <clears throat> they got daggers out there. Um, the last part of our web is the blogs. So we'll constantly have stories in the space and then rotate the stories through our uh, social media stuff. And you could connect to our social media stuff anywhere from Facebook, uh, Twitter, Pinterest, YouTube, I don't even know what this one is, but that may be Instagram. So, <clears throat> and if you guys want to do the same thing here for yourself, um, know that this website probably took, to get it to this level, it probably took us about a year. Right? It didn't have to take us a year, but um, you know, I'm not the one hitting the buttons, but it makes certain that um, we, tr we try to get everything out of what we need. Um, and as this website grow, we should grow uh, in the very same line. So I'm going to open up the floor to Q&A. Um, know that um, we're all about becoming investors. Um, finding money is extremely critical. And um, I've found some level of capital with the community banks. Um, and I talked about that before. but uh, this week coming, um, we will be making another step into finding capital. And what I'll do this week, because now that our kitchen has been renovated and we're under a traditional mortgage, we now have the, the, the opportunity to convert all of a traditional mortgage into um, having the traditional mortgage as a HELOC. What does that mean? That means now that properties values are going higher, I want to capitalize on that by having access to additional capital using my primary residence. So I'm going to walk into the bank either Monday or Tuesday 
convert that traditional into a HELOC, and they're going to give me an additional check writing capabilities out of the very same mortgage that we own. So now my, my home now be becomes an instrument of investing because now I have a, a, an additional um, capital stack that I can tap into should I need to, right? And that's one of the additional steps that we want to do so that we can have access to more money. The next step for me after uh, converting my primary residence into a HELOC is um, applying for another personal line of credit that's unsecured through SOFI, S-O-F-I. Um, I did a preliminary with them already and they did a soft pull. They are offering $50,000 line of credit unsecured. Hmm. So between all these cap stacks, you know, we want to grow our capital stack to somewhere north of $500,000. Once we grow our cap stack to north of half a million, and, and, and it's easy to do, that's pretty much 10 companies in partnership with us with minimum $50,000. So, so far, we would then be working on two companies that would have given us 50,000. So that's 100K through the insurance policy, that's an additional 100. So that's 200K um, through um, the credit union, that's another 50, 60K, that's 260. So you see where I'm going with this number? This number need to be constantly increased. Um, so right now we're at two, we'll be at 260 once I finish the HELOC. Uh, and I'm assuming that uh, the HELOC should be an additional 50K, which would then bring us to about 310, right? So with that said, all of these are pools of capital that we can use in order to do acquisitions and bank upon, amongst ourselves. So we don't have any hassle with quickly closing a deal or getting a deal done. And everyone else in here, this is, this is repeatable and duplicatable. This is not rocket science. Um, don't think for one minute um, you know, that I'm smarter than anybody else in the club. No, 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 no. <laughs> there are plenty of other smarter people out there um, than myself. The, the, the goal is that um, by yourself, we can't do it. Well, you know, we need everybody to chip in. And, you know, from my upbringing, coming from the Bahamas, uh, we have a sharing mentality. Uh, and that's just, but we don't want to be taken advantage of either. So uh, that now um, is one of the lemmas of the United States being a, 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 an extreme litigious society. So that's why we have to spend extra money on making sure we have the right partners, including having those lawyers um, that spell out the deal exactly how it should go. Any other questions? Whitney has her hand up. I don't know if she's already been covered. Yeah, I think. Uh, Whitney, you have another question? Or that was from the first question that you had? Yeah, that was from the first question. I that was just, yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, at the end of the day, guys, leverage what you have in the club. I mean, um, there shouldn't be anything stopping you um, at this particular moment. But there again, we haven't fully developed the entire uh, program for you to access. Um, and tap into our additional resources. But I think this is a good start. Um, understanding where we're getting our capital from is obviously um, another great place to start um, so that uh, once we start doing deals, we don't have to stop. And that's just it. You know, so I'll create the links hopefully this week on our website for uh, um, having the documentation automated through through the website. Um, and so what does that mean? That means that I'll probably have to get an account with DocuSign this week. Um, all the contracts behind putting a deal underneath contract 
Um, we will probably have those automated through the system that anybody could come on the website um, and pretty much direct traffic with an automation uh, just by clicking a link and sending out an email. And then I'll start with an email funnel that will then um, give everyone access to the contracts that can be forwarded and signed, that kind of thing. And through DocuSign, when the documents are signed, they'll then come back and say the documents are complete. And once the documents are complete, then we can start the process with the acquisition or at least getting a, a deal on the contract. All right, and that's it for the Sunday show, March 20th, 2022. Um, on, as a side note, yes, I did start the Forex trading on Thursday. I do have a video of, of what that looks like on the YouTube as well too. Um, so anyone interested in that can start there. So every Thursday at 4 a.m., you can join me or not. Um, it's not mandatory, but I will, I, will be, I will be documenting my history in the Forex space. Um, and I'm, fine, I'm having a lot of fun with it, by the way. Um, and I'll give you an example, brief example here. Let's see. Of what I'm looking at in this space. So every week, this is my box that I look at for Forex. And these boxes help me analyze a deal. Um, and I just purchased a product this week. Um, I can't wait to unbox it, by the way, once it comes. Um, I recently purchased a, a a product called the Magic Key. Um, let me, for those of you who are interested, bring that up. Magic Key, Magic Key. Let me go over here. Magic Key. <clears throat> Magic Key. Slow to make Stanley. Come on, come on, come on, come on. But it's one of these um, risk calculators that actually help you put on trades and understanding what your risk levels are. Volume two. The mid stack. This has taken a little too long to come up. But let's see what happens over the next couple of minutes. But it's um, it should help out on instead of being manually trading, we can then have help with understanding what it takes in order um, to trade successfully, having proper risk management underneath our belt. Now, what you're looking at is four separate windows in four separate time frames. I don't always have the layout in this way, but for the most part, um, this, I'm trading only one pairing um, going through our Forex trading, I'm, I'm trading gold. So I'm interested in trading gold constantly. And the top window here to my left is what a one minute chart looks like. Um, to the right of that over here where the arrow is, that's a 15 minute window. And the one below here is a five minute window. And the one over here to the bottom left is a Renko Street um, <clears throat> charting process, which just simply helps me to understand the patterns. Um, but how I trade, I try to keep my trading real simple. 
um, and understanding what the spreads are, which is right here, 2.6. And let's oscillate sometimes between two, two and maybe four sometimes. The higher the spread is, <clears throat> you may want to be careful not to trade during times of high spread. But in the meantime, uh, this system of how I trade um, goes to simply understanding what it takes in order to be on the right side of the tape. Um, my decisions come with the five minute indicators. Uh, the one minute indicators are fine, but um, when we analyze um, a, a, a goal setting, we simply want to know where is price action going to be in the next couple of minutes so that I can profit from it. Right? And if I can't profit from it, how do I trade safely um, to whereby I don't lose much money? So that's, that's pretty much all Forex is. Uh, uh, we can complicate it as much as we like, but um, I simply trade by price action and I wait for certain setups to occur. I don't force anything. I'm simply a reactor to the markets, that's it. So this is what I'm showing on Thursday morning at 4 a.m. to 6 a.m. If you guys wanna join me, um, just uh, send me an email and then I will put you onto the Zoom link for that. So don't worry about missing it. Um, it's not for everybody, but if you do miss something, I will certainly put it on our YouTube channel. So you won't miss much. And that's about the size of it for today's session. I know we covered a lot. Uh, are there any questions? This is what the magic key looks like. Ooh, there you go. That's the magic key. Um, is a box that I'll get that looks just like this to help me with trading. So depending on the allotment size, I can close full positions, close half positions, or I can do customizable closes with these three keys right here. Sometimes it's a little difficult to do that on an MT4 when you're manually trading. However, um, this connected to our MT4 would help us, um, just help us with the sheer speed of uh, having a transaction done um, by fingertips versus um, putting out the manual orders. And it operates as a risk management calculator. So if I only want to risk 2% of my account, and four trades per day, I could limit my trading to just that. And you know, we'll get into managing the risk to having a successful trading career. And these tools help out with that. Um, every tool that I participate in, I'm also creating an affiliated link for it as well too. So I'm creating an affiliate partnership with this company so that um, as we talk about it, um, we can share the links underneath our YouTube channel for sale as well. And that's the magic key. And we'll get into more of that uh, a little bit later. I don't think, um, don't, don't think that the magic key is going to either help make you a successful trader or not. You got to come with your own strategies before you even buy this thing. So you got to understand what your risk is. Um, have I blown accounts before? Yeah, I've blown accounts. Um, the main reason why you blow accounts is simply because you over leverage. This is simply to help remind me of what my risk tolerance is so that I don't have to lose sleep. And anytime you lose in sleep over a trade, that's not a good thing. That means you have too much risk on. <laughs> so I've been there. Um, you know, I've been there when I was a day trader. I was there in the Forex market. Um, but when you have on a lot of risk and the trade is going your way, you're good. But boy, when it goes the other way, you're like, <clears throat> man, ouch. So if no further questions, I'm going to end the session here. And for those of you who want to see me on Thursday at 4 a.m., please join me. If not, catch the video 
um, on the YouTube channel. But we're getting organized as best as we can. Um, as I said, it took me probably a year to a year and a half in order to get here, um, finding the right people to help on the website, and finding the right people to help in the development, finding the right people um, just to make sure that this process was not an arduous process. Uh, and there again, you don't have to be the smartest guys in the room, right? Um, what I'm finding out in this space is in order to get the courage to move forward, in, we simply need to talk and that will give you the courage to push the button. All right, without further ado, I'm gonna end it here. Um, any questions before I go? I, I like to make sure not to leave anybody out so that we can make sure that we get everything in and everyone understands like the next step and the trajectory where we're headed and uh, hopefully they can see themselves or you can see yourselves in that trajectory as of how it relates to you making money within the system um you can hear me yeah i can hear you oh uh, you say once i um come across a deal like could always send a link to you on the site on youtube and then you will um check it out and yeah, our best uh, we can uh, go forward with it or right i mean if you find a deal send me the address through email initially but we probably want to get everything connected to the website whereby you wouldn't have to send me an address at all you would then be able to link it through the website put in the address and we should be able to do an analysis um, from there as it relates to the deal flow because I, I don't think you were here during the session when we um, showcased Delio.pro as well as Senfuse, which is two softwares, which is a CRM software. I'm trying to figure out how we can give access to that out to everybody in the club and they leverage that software for their benefits. Simply help on terms of research. So you can see what the comps are for an area. It just helps you understand and analyze a lot better with the, an electronical database. Um, and we simply can put all the databases together for the farm area. That's why we wanna start in a farm area that's close to us um, and understand the system extremely well um, before we branch out into, let's say all of Florida. So let's understand Brevard first, and then let's expand to all of Florida. And then if we expand to all of Florida, then we can go across the nation and expand that way too. What are the hottest cities? What are, you know, I mean, and there's distressed properties everywhere. We just need to partner with the right set of people in order to do the acquisition, uh, do the upgrades and the work. And, um, you know, over time, you're going to find some bad eggs. You're going to find some good eggs. Um, that's, that's just about, that's just a, the cost of doing business these days. And our goal is to eliminate as many bad eggs as we can and uh, keep the ball moving forward. All right. Good. Oh yeah, and, and once you get your money, you could send it to the Bahamas by the way. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You know, uh, uh, and, and uh, we'll talk about that in, in great detail with me, right? Because unlike you, you reside in the United States. Kavon resides in Trinidad. That's a whole different tax structure, right? Yeah. I may, I may, um, I will, I will can talk to you this week. Um, I may have a deal, but it's in, uh, it's in North Obama. Mm -hmm. uh, well, we we, we, we're not going to be doing deals in Nassau, Bahamas, uh -huh. um, because our software doesn't, um, our, our, our partnerships don't, have not include the Bahamas just yet, right? Okay. Now, speaking of deals in the Bahamas, I am talking to Darcy Ramig, um, one of the owners of an exchange over there, and we're collaborating about um, what would it take in order to do deals in the bonds from this side of, this side of the fence. 
Mm -hmm. Individuals who have companies that are outside of the US, uh, what we're recommending is have a US company um, raise capital here in the US and then have a subsidiary over in one of the third world countries like Trinidad, Jamaica, Bahamas, Egypt, wherever, wherever there's an extension. And once that extension um, um, can be a subsidiary of a US based company, now you tie yourself into constantly raising capital to support the entire enterprise, including the subsidiary located um, outside of the US. So we're talking about that. Um, and one, and if I can impose on your thoughts, um, think about it this way. If I have a medical business here in the US and I could expand in all 50 states by raising capital, having a subsidiary in the Bahamas with a partnership or a joint venture with another medical company, um, whereby we bring capital systems, additional doctors, that's a no brainer to do. So think about it along those lines. So for example, if you're in catering, um, think about having a catering service here in the US, whereby you can scale it into all 50 states and also have a subsidiary in the Bahamas, that kind of thing. So think about this market being the number one market, buying businesses, scaling businesses in this space before you even contemplate having a subsidiary in the places like Bahamas, Jamaica, or wherever else in the Caribbean or anywhere else in the world that matters. Because at the end of the day, it's gonna take some time in order for you to build up the relationships in that space in order to complete your joint venture because your first course of business is to scale the business here in the US first. Right. All right, so scale here first, once you have sufficient levels of cash flows, then you go talk joint ventures with the people down in the Bahamas and go from there. And that's for any one of us in any particular um, setting uh, with our specialty. So if your specialty is air conditioning, then scale here first in the air conditioning space and then look for a subsidiary over in the Bahamas or wherever and do a joint venture that way. You, so you see where I'm going with this? Whatever your core competency is, scale it here first, prove it here first, and then um, make the leap of faith into um, that specialty within the Caribbean as a, as a subsidiary. Okay. All right, but don't do it the other way around. <laughs> you're going to fail, right? And, and not to say that you're going to fail because you're not smart enough, you're going to fail because you don't have sufficient capital in order to push that. Right. Right. So you want to get your capital stacks strong enough. So when you do, um, and when you are supporting your subsidiaries, you have enough cash in order to support them. Okay. Purely mathematics, right? Um, no capital, no success. All right. All right, so. All right. So if nothing else, I'm going to end this session here. And then uh, we will link up next week, Sunday at the same time, same back channel. And, um, you know, uh, I guess uh, I look forward to every one of you being millionaires in your own right. But let's do it together. I agree. Agreed. Agreed. Have a good night. All right, John. Thank you so much for coming out, guys. Good night. Yes. All right. So everyone, take care. All right. Okay. Yeah, man. Bye. Yeah. Thank you. You too.